welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, Army launches Operation Cat Race to tackle farmers and herdsmen crisis. Chief of Army Staff orders troops to go after arms bearing herders and militia or face court martial. Police arrest four persons linked to the killing of officers in Nasarawa and some residents of Benue State as Inspector General of Police engages indigents of both states in talks to end the farmers and herdsmen crisis. Crisis within the APC in Kaduna State deepens as state government demolishes the secretariat of a faction of the party in the state. And South Africa's new president Cyril Ramaphosa to screen lifestyles of future government officials as he gets set to form his cabinet. On business news tonight, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation says it has spent over $5 billion to bring in petrol since 2017. On sports news tonight, the Confederation of African Football CAF approves Agege Stadium as home ground of MFM FC for the 2018 Champions League. And from Abuja, Senate orders investigation of lawmaker Senator Ovier Omo Agege over alleged offensive statements on the amendment of the Electoral Act. We begin tonight with a directive from the Chief of Army Staff to troops deployed for the special military exercise codenamed Katres in Benue State. Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai is asking the soldiers to either engage the group of armed herdsmen terrorizing local communities or face military court martial. The Army Chief was speaking at the flag off exercise in Goma, local government area of Benue State. Governor Samuel Otom observing the military parade. Flagging off exercise cat race in Guma local government area of Benue State. Governor Autumn is not a military man, but his dressing in a military outfit speaks volume about the importance attached to the exercise. He is accompanied by Governor Yahaya Bello of Kogi State, who is also combat ready and here to be a part in the latest move at restoring peace to the north central region. The chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai, leads Governor Otom to the operations command center for a briefing on the exercise with the commander of the 707 Special Forces, explaining to them the extent of troops' deployment and the task ahead. Military intelligence teams were deployed ahead of the actual conduct for intelligence mapping and to sustain surveillance activities in the general areas of the exercise. For officers and men of the Nigerian army, the exercise catch race is not another talk shop, but a clearly defined assertion of military might to quell the tension created by the clashes between herdsmen and farmers in north-central Nigeria, particularly in Benue State. General Buratai's directive to the troops to properly defend the state from attacks has also rekindled Governor Autumn's confidence in the exercise. I don't expect any officer or soldier not to you know, engage to bring any situation to proper control you know, uh, in a situation where he sees there is obvious arson, there, was obvi there is obvious attempt to kill innocent citizens, there is... Uh, clear evidence to show that uh, he himself and his colleagues are in danger. So I have confidence that uh, Mr. President's approval of uh, the Chief of Army Staff with his team to come to Benue and other states in the North Central Zone will restore peace for our people and our people will return homes. So I'm sure that criminals will have to flee as uh, the cat is here. So the rats have no hiding place again. The team then moves to the Bajimba IDP camp where community leaders and some displaced persons pleaded with General Buratai to ensure that the exercise is unbiased to help restore peace to their troubled villages. If they actually perform the duties that are set for, but today we will go back and there will be peace in this settlement. Exercise cat race is coming at a time the rising conflict between herdsmen and farmers require urgent attention. But not just that, it is perhaps another form of assurance to the people that indeed the government of the day is doing everything possible to ensure the safety 
of lives. And while the army gets set to tackle the armed herdsmen and other militia, the police are already recording some successes in their effort, as four persons have been arrested in Tunga Town in Nasrawa State in connection with the killing of policemen and some residents of Benue State. The Deputy Inspector General of Police heading the operation made this known today in Makudi, the Benue State capital. According to him, the suspects who confessed to the killings also made some revelations about arms in their possession. The police have promised to continue the operation in Benue, Taraba and other parts affected by the farmers' herdsmen crisis. And staying with security issues, the Inspector General of Police has been holding a peace meeting with stakeholders from Nasrawa and Benue states to find ways to end the crisis between farmers and herders. The police chief, Mr. Ibrahim Idris, is asking the stakeholders to ensure that resolutions reached at the meeting target peace and reconciliation. It's a gathering of stakeholders from Benue and Nasrawa states. The Inspector General of Police and convener of the meeting highlight the essence of the meeting as he harps on the need for peace and reconciliation. I know a lot of effort and uh, progress has been made in this our crisis between Benue and uh, Nasrawa states. I was I attended uh, the, the staple, stakeholders meeting both in Benue and Natural State. And I conducted on the search, I mean on the spot assessment to Logo, from to Ayim and to Tunga also. We have lived together as The Deputy Governor of Benue State uploads the decision to hold the meeting aimed at resolving crises in both states that were created out of the old Benue Plateau State. The best we can do for our children and our children's children is to try and maintain peace so that cordiality can exist between the peoples of Benue and Nasrawa states. We have therefore come here today with good intention. We've come here with sincerity of purpose. And we are here to rub minds with our brethren from Nasrawa State. They want peace the leader of the Nasrawa State delegation and special advisor to the governor on security matters explained that both states are not at war, but for the rifling effect on the Benue State anti open grazing law. The only thing that concerns us from Nasrawa State is the ripple effect of the open grazing prohibition law in Benue State, which the government and people of Nasrawa State are not in the position to say anything contrary to what the people of Benue State want. Although the meeting continued behind closed doors, the Nasrawa State government reaffirms its commitment to accommodate all those running away from the anti-open grazing law. In the meantime, the House of Representatives is asking the federal government to reconsider the proposed establishment of cattle colonies and encourage the herdsmen to embrace ranching. After considering a motion on the need to educate herdsmen on the benefits of ranching, the House observes that the proposed establishment of cattle colonies violates the Land Use Act. Our correspondent Kayla Magua reports. The clashes between farmers and herdsmen have stemmed from herds of cattle roaming across the country in search of grazing pastures. This is the view of members of the House of Representatives. The incessant clashes between herdsmen and farmers. In a motion sponsored by a member from Nasarawa State, the lawmakers observed that the proposed establishment of cattle colonies across the country is not in tandem with Section 42 of the 1999 Constitution and the Land Use Act. Concerned that the decision to establish cattle colonies in each state could be in violation of Section 42 and 43 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 is amended and the Land Use Act also urged the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources to lie with the State Ministers of Agriculture to speedily educate and encourage the herdsmen on the benefit of ranching. However, Representative Nasiru Ahmed from Kano State opposed the motion, arguing that ranches will be more expensive for the herders. In countries 
countries where ranching is done, if you notice, they have a steady rainfall of seven to eight months a year. Let's take some states, for example, in Nigeria, that have a maximum of three months of rain. If you have those cattle in a ranch, after that three months of rain, what happens? The motion was then adopted through a voice vote, and the House Committee on Agriculture, Production and Services was mandated to ensure implementation. The committee was given eight weeks to conclude its assignment and report back to the House for further legislative action. Kayla Megwa, Channels Television News. And the Emir of Kano, Mohamedou Sanusi II, has a message for anyone found flouting the anti-open grazing law in states where the law has been enacted. And the message is that they should be made to face the music. The Emir's message was delivered by the former governor of Kano State, Ibrahim Shekerao, in Adoekiti, during a visit to the Akiti State Governor, Ayodili Fayoshi. The Emir is asking all herdsmen to abide by the rules of the anti-grazing law set by the state. There appears to be a silver lining in Ekiti State on the thorny issue of farmers and herders' relations. And this gathering tends to bear witness to that. The former governor of Kano State and the national president of Mieti Ala Castle Breeders Association of Nigeria are emissaries of the Emir of Kano. They have come to see the state governor, bearing with them words of commendation over his handling of the farmers' herdsmen crisis in Ekiti. Gratitude, appreciation, and commendation to the governor and government of Egypt State for maintaining the peace, for the show of concern to all, and also for ensuring compliance with the rules and for putting in place appropriate laws that is in the best interest of all parties. On the issue of compliance, the president of the Castle Breeders wants his members to obey the rules set by the governor. I will send a message to my people to, to follow the rule and regulation of the state. That night grazing, we are not accept the night grazing because the night grazing is the cause of the problem of the farmlands and farm, uh, farmers and rearers problem. This is our message in my, in my people. For Governor Ayodele Fayashe, what is worth doing is worth doing well and peacefully. Well, this is the beginning of a new dawn for peace in Nigeria and the Southwest and the country at large. You listen to them, they have endorsed the laws uh, made by the House of Assembly and uh, they have told their people to obey these laws, no grazing at night, cooperate with us, and equally we have uh, undertaken to make sure that they are equally protected because the law protects the two of them. The pathway to peace might be long, but moments like this, where dialogue takes precedence, encourages the journey. And we move on to some other matters now. And a three-man panel of the ECOWAS Court of Justice, presided over by Justice Friday Mwoke, has fixed May the 31st to rule on a suit filed by some indigents of Benue State, accusing the federal government of violating their right to life by failing to protect them from attacks. At the resumed hearing of the suit in Abuja today, counsel to the complainant says that the federal government failed to protect Agatu people from herdsman attacks between 2012 and 2016, leading to the loss of several lives and property. Although the federal government was not represented in court, the complainants are also asking the court to award the sum of one trillion naira as compensation for families of the persons who lost their loved ones and means of livelihood. In part two, after the break, media executives and other players in the broadcast industry discuss ways to tackle the challenge of technological innovation to shape the industry's future in Nigeria. That's in a moment. Please stay with us. <laughs> 